Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Bonjour et bienvenue, mesdames et messieurs. Buenos dias y bienvenido. My name is sang Kim, and welcome to ICAO's um, 13th Air Nash Navigation Conference. Um, my, uh, uh, this is day four, session number 16, in our series of Sky Talks. For those who have missed some of our sessions, please make sure to uh, go on YouTube and press uh, type in ICAO Sky Talks, and you'll see all of our lists of um, presentations. I'd like to uh, thank all of the our presenters and, and to share uh, their uh, valuable insights with us. Now today, uh, you know how we are bombarded with information. Uh, it seems like we are getting more and more data just from uh, everyday walk of life. Now to uh, deal with uh, ICAO specifically, uh, here to present ICAO's API data services, please welcome one of the most hardworking uh, and talented people here. She is in charge of big data customer service. Uh, she, uh, she is the, sorry, big data customer uh, support assistant. Welcome, Ms. Yuchen Wan. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming in such an early morning. I know it's hard, but I uh, hope the chilly Montreal has waken you up and you won't be hypnotized by the following presentation. So I am uh, supposed to have over 300 people here, uh, but obviously I don't. So maybe others are still in the airport because of a canceled or delayed flight? Probably. So let me ask you a question. Does anyone here ever had a flight delayed or canceled? Well, I suppose uh, we all had this before, and if you didn't, lucky you are. When we experience this, we may become one of them, and someone who is waiting for us may become like this. I have a friend who works in Austin, Texas, and he planned to meet his wife, who is working in California, who have a very cheap weekend, which is very normal. However, the connecting flight to San Diego was delayed due to the weather, and he had to take off that airplane at 9.30 p.m. So then he hesitated in either wait for a possible late flight, or took a train, or took a car, or rented one, or even like uh, someone there, staying there for one night and uh, leave the next day. No matter which option, he needs information to make a decision. Thankfully, as an instrumented uh, rated pilot, he knew exactly where can find those information. So after a few minutes of research, he found the information and uh, rented a car just before he was informed that the flight was delayed and also canceled. So he also awaited uh, the way ahead of the rest of the passengers. After experiencing this, his wife suggests him to create a web page to track all the delayed flight. I have to say he has a smart wife. So in order to have a, such a website, he needs some information like uh, the airport list including the airport code, the airport's name, the longitude, the latitude to know the location of the airport, and also the number of the total delayed flight of that airport. So he came to me because he knew that this information can be found from IKEA API data service. And finally, he got this website. So today, let's talk about IKEA API data. My name is Yuchen in charge of this service in IKEA. Before we go into this topic, let's spend a little bit of time on API. The term sounds familiar, but not everyone knows exactly its meaning. What's an API? Air Pollution Index, very important. Animal Protection Institute, even more famous. Or Adobe Printer Inc., well, probably we all need it. And someone even think that's the name of the beer. It's not guilty not to know what an API stands for. I didn't even know that before I took this job. And I know pretty many people who work both in technology or elsewhere, they have rather vague or incorrect idea about this uh, fairly common term meaning. In reality, an API is a software intermediary that allows two applications to talk to each other. And technically speaking, it stands for Application Programming Interface. 
So in other words, an API is a messenger that uh, delivers your requests to the provider that you are requesting from and then delivers the responses back to you. So now we have a question. Why do we need API or why do we need to provide API? If we need information like data, we have a lot of ways. We can ask a friend, we can make a phone call, we can send an email and the data can be sent back to us by email. But sometimes the data may be too huge to be able to be sent by email. And the more matters is that you always have more than expected. Like uh, last uh, time I log in with my Amazon account. I was trying to buy some food for my puppy. So I input dog food there. And it shows me some list of the options for dog food. But other than that, it also gives me some options for cat food. What? Really? How do you know I also have a cat? So you see, sometimes you always get some more information that you expect in good way, but sometimes may not. At some point or another, most large companies have built APIs for their customer or for internal use. They've just built a set of dedicated URLs that gives you pure data responses, which means these data responses won't contain any presentational overhead that you would expect in a graphical user interface, like a website. Let's look at this API hyperlink. It contains and only contain the following parts. The first is a server. That's the one you ask the question and give you the responses. And the second is the data you requested. So you can see some uh, two or three slashes here. It's really like you are looking for some information in your computer. And you go to folder A, there are some subfolders on the folder A. So let's say you go to folder A1, and maybe there are some other subfolders. And the data you need is in a specific place, so you won't miss it. And the third part is something like your ID, and here is an API key you need when you do the online requiring or the full download. Now we have a better idea about API. Let's go into IKO API. First, let's see some views from our real users. The first one is FAA Aviation Weather Camera Program. They use our IKO API to help uh, obtain identifier information of their products, which provides the near real-time camera image and other aviation-related uh, aviation -related data and also the weather information for their pilots. The second is the Blue Sky Network. Uh, they use our IQ Notums API to provide the uh, technical support. And the third, Dragonfly Arrow. They think IQ API can help verify the currency and the accuracy in terms of uh, IQ code, IATA code, and also national ID pairings. And then we also have a private software company of America called Palantir Technologies. So they also think IQ API is very valuable to help their work. Other industries like Boeing, they think IQ API is the most reliable and also up-to-date data sets. It's a very high price, thank you. And not the biggest price, our brother IATA also uses IQ API data sets. So now we have another question. What kind of data can satisfy so many different users? The answer is a lot. But IQ API data is one of them. And since this service started in 2016, we now have over thousands of users. And we have new users every day. I'm very happy to see people are using it and that people are happy to use it. But I'm also very, very busy with a lot of emails and calls regarding, you know, to request the data sets and the information every day. And sometimes, you know, even see another one. Let's see who it is. Hi, this is Laura from Sao Paulo Airport. Uh, may I speak to Yichun, please? This is my friend from Brazil. Hi, Laura. How are you? Nice to meet you. Uh, this is Yichun speaking. Uh, by the way, I only speak to Portuguese. Bom dia! Bom dia, Yuchen. Uh, how are you? Uh, actually, I want to continue the talk about API data service. And my boss, Marcela, is with me today here too. And could you please give us some information about that? Sure. Hi, Marcela. Nice to meet you. It's so good timing. I'm just giving the presentation. Uh, would you like to join us? I'm going to show you some information on my screen. Can you tell me? Can you see the screen clearly? Hi, Chen. Uh, nice to meet you. Uh, yeah, I would like to join the presentation and hope I didn't miss any important information. Uh, and yes, I can see your screen very well. Please go ahead. 
Okay, sure. Thank you. So I will continue our topic, and if you have any questions, just let me know anytime. Now we have totally 57 APIs under six different categories about API data service. And uh, there are airspace, aircraft, airlines, airports, occurrences, and states. Under each of them, you have different options of the APIs. And the red ones here uh, are some APIs more popular than others according to the usage of the thousands of users. And uh, it's very easy to get all of these data sets. You just need an API key, which could be requested from the website. We have two formats in terms of the data delivery. You can choose either CSV or in JSON as you need it. So let's take two examples to see how you can get the data sets from the website and how these data sets can be used. The first is the aerodrome location indicator. So this is the one give you the list of the location indicator for 13,722 aerodromes. So remember what we said about uh, how API works? First, you need to let the server know what's your question. So for this data set, you need to input some information like uh, the three letter ISO state code, the four letter IQ airports code, and you also need to choose the, the format of the data delivery. And after processing, the server will give you some information, including uh, the country name and code, and the airport name and code, the city name, the longitude, latitude, and also the geometry. So this data set is usually used in knowing the exact location of the aerodrome. We all know that sometimes this information is very important uh, for some work, for example, the satellite installation work. Another one is FIR data set. So the same, first you input some information, and for this one, you need to put the place following the required uh, formats and uh, choose the format of the data. And the output information will include uh, the FIR name and the code, the region code, and also the longitude, latitude, and uh, the elevation of the airport in input. And this data set is usually very helpful in air navigation work. For example, we have some applications using this information to analyze the overflight traffic work. Since this service started in July 2016, we now have over 4,000 users. And all of the users come from different areas like the airlines, airports, states, uh, manufacturers, consulting companies, in international organizations, industries, etc. And the users use our data sets in different ways. For example, internally, we have the integrated safety trend analysis and the reporting system, or we call it uh, iStars. I think uh, some of you have, have already know it and uh, even used it. So it's a web-based system, gives you a very quick, convenient, and also user-friendly interface of uh, a collection of data sets related to their air navigation and also safety efficient. So on the back, the system uses the API data sets to populate those web applications. Now you may have a better idea of the relation between iStars and APIs. Above are some general introduction of IQ API data service. So Marcella, do you have some specific questions so far? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, thanks for the introduction. And uh, actually I wanna know, do you have any APIs that I can access to navigation and the safety related data? Uh, well, that's a very good question. And the answer is yes. So I will show you some example from both external and the internal users regarding using the air navigation and the safety data sets. The first is not an explorer. So this is a product of Boeing Technology and Research Europe. It uses our NOTAMS API data sets. So this explorer um, is a one using the solar technology to allow the wide search and the filtering and also uses the cloud technology for building the graphics and also the dashboard as what you can see here. The second example is a product of IQ. So it's an app on iStars. It's called IQ USOP Report. This report gives you a dedicated result related to the performance of the states within the USOP CMA program in, in comparison with other states. So this is a good place for you to know where you are as a state when you want to know how is your effective implementation. And again, on the back, the data used to populate this analytical report can be downloaded from the IQ API data. 
Another example is uh, SkyRouter, so it's a product from the Blue Sky Network. And this one is a leading industry fleet portal, uh, management portal, tracking over thousands of aviation, marine, and also land-based assets anywhere in the world. So it's an asset to track and also for management solution. It uses uh, several IQ API data service, including IQ member states lists, location indicator, and the FIR, and also NOTAMs. The next one is uh, Aviation Safety Implementation Assistant Partnership Prioritization. I know it's long, so we call it ASHEP Prioritization. It's a tool designed to identify the top list of the states prioritized for a technical assistance using the ASHEP methodology and also using the real data from the, um, a lot of sources like IQ USOP, IQ API, and also the data from the World Bank. So here you can see the top list of the states need technical assistance. And we also have a product uh, related to telecommunication solution, but according to the request of the provider, we have to make the company's name anonymous. So this is a product used to collect the turbo machinery data for equipment health management. And it uses the aerodrome location indicator to know the exact location of the airport in order to calculate the distance between the aerodrome and the satellite installation. The last example I want to show you is also an app on iStars. It's called Contingency Planning 8. So it uses uh, um, the FIR data sets. And I also want to tell you the one who made this is also the one who made both iStars and also API data service. He's uh, Mr. Marco Marines, the chief of IA and AMB. And he's also here today with us. So as you can see, the maps and the graphs here is a simulation of uh, FIR Montreal. Uh, it shows you how the overflight traffic would be rerouted if the zone would be closed. So it's assumed that the overflight traffic would choose the shortest route to avoid the zone. Okay, so above are some uh, examples of the usage regarding to the air navigation data sets and also safety data sets. Uh, Marcella, if you want more, I can send you after the presentation. And do you have any other specific questions? Thanks for these uh, um, examples. And I think it's really helpful. And another small question. Sure. How frequent do you update your data? Well, it uh, really depends on. We have over 50 data sets. We update them differently. For example, for Nautum's API, we update the every three hours. But for others, it's different. Any more questions? I don't think I have any more questions today. Uh, thanks so much for your presentation. Uh, I really like your API. And uh, I will send you an email to follow up. Obrigada. That's Obrigada. Have a nice day. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye. So this is the IKO API, the data set that can air access all the air navigation and the safety data easily. Uh, thanks for your listening and attention and questions. Thank you. Uh, I wish you have a good time here during the conference. Thanks so much.